Um, so we'll start with Andre. I know Andre wanted to talk to me or ask me some questions. So hey guys. Hey everyone. So I'm gonna try to be objective because this has so many levels. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's it's based on a, a lot of things that that happened in my life in the last two weeks regarding the last seven years, which I'm not gonna out of here for a long story reason. But basically, I you asked a question on the first class, so another classmate about the the golden ticket. Yeah, you remember that? I do. And. I remember that the first time I ever um, talked to somebody about my my views that that's ten years ago about where I would go. I first thing that came into my mind, I, I barely knew how to draw and things like that. It was I want to work on a Star Wars mo Star Wars movie. The first art book I ever bought was the Episode Three um, concept art book, and uh, and when you asked that. Like after all the things I did, uh, I've done. I, I've, I've done comics, bo comic books. I've been to Comic Con. I've been to. I work with RPGs today. And when you asked about the golden ticket, it, uh, Star Wars came back to my head. Like every time somebody asks that, that's at least the thought that comes to my head first. So that tells me something. And well. On the last weeks, uh, basically three or four of my main projects just went south for various reasons. Nothing really bad happened or anything, but they just didn't work out. And um, again, when you ask that, that's the, th the, the that's the first thing that came to came as a sense for me. And the last four years, I've been studying hard to to get to a level where I could be good. To at least start on this business because I I dropped about uh, dropped uh, uh, a job I had. I came back to to living with my folks in order to really understand how to to do this. And nowadays I live out of my um, of of teaching art to other people and to and basically doing the RPG artwork, which is very fulfilling I really enjoy do, uh, enjoy doing that and it's 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 been good for my uh, for my financial financial um, endeavors so that I can go back to to live on my own and stuff like that so now I have some time to invest in a career because I have a little bit of money to to invest in that and uh, and now I can think better because my my other projects they tanked so now I now I figure myself thinking about that and the thing is I've been doing a lot of ideas and and approaches and talking to various different kinds of artists about what I should do or should not do and they all come up with a different answer and usually it's it's not as thorough meaning it's kind of easy to say okay follow your heart or just uh, just look at what they have and try to be as good as them and that's they're, they're all good advices but especially for me who is not a very focused person Mm -hmm. This is super hard to program. Like, what am I doing now? Am I doing concept arts based on the the idea that I'm that I'm doing RPGs so that I can link the both of them so I can keep uh, growing in the in the place that's giving me money right now so I can go to that ultimate goal, or should I just start over, or should uh, what, should I invest on 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 my own publicity? On my on my should I use Instagram should I go you know like so so many questions about about that so that the, the question I have for you is how do I organize these thoughts and where do I start because this is the the biggest pickle in my head right now like I, I know that that I I know I can do it I know that it might take some some time and I 
I have way more structure emotionally, rationally, and as an art, uh, as a draftsman than I had before. So I, I know I can keep evolving, but I think that I can, that I should uh, have at least a better plan than what I have right now. So does it make sense or? Yeah, okay. So um, I, I've already told you the answer. Mm -hmm. And it seems like other people have told you the answer too. The problem is uh, you're not listening. Because hmm. let me ask you, what do you want to do? If you had a golden ticket, where would you want to do? What would you want to do? Well, if I had a golden ticket, yeah. I would be like what? working on, on, an, on the next Star Wars movie. Okay. So what are you doing today to start to make that ha actually happen? Well, I started, and that was last Sunday. So basically, I wasn't doing anything. But um, what I what I started doing was my I, I I started doing some concepts based on my ideas of what was missing in the movies. In the Star Wars movies. Yeah, things that I thought that would be resonating better with the fan base and with the. Um, with the story overall. All right. And then what else do you think you could do? Well, to be completely honest, I should start shaking when I thought when I think about those things. Well, what 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 can you do? What should you do? Think about okay. it. Okay. Um So, your first question, your first answer was great. But that's one of many. What else can you do? What else can you do to make this a reality? Well, I can prepare, like, as I said, like, uh, Star Wars related um, work based yeah. on the things that do better. Okay. And what else can you do? Talk to people that worked there or yep. used that's to great. work there. What else can you do? Uh, I don't know. Um, just think about it. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think without being afraid. <laughs> no, just answer the question. Whatever comes to your mind. So okay, far, you're doing uh, great. Okay, okay. Uh... <laughs> Tori. Yes, I am. I am rapid iterating questions. That's actually good. Um, trying to understand the story about those people, like what took them there. Yeah, great. What else? Okay. Um, okay, I'll stop, course, you. I'll stop you there, because I think you're starting to get, get the hang of what I'm trying to do t right now. Mm -hmm. Problem isn't about, this is the number one problem that I, I see with students, like in your predicament specifically. It's mm -hmm. not a matter of where do I start. It's a matter of just starting okay okay like you just weren't starting at all you're just just starting doing it yeah. after 10 yeah. years you've decided yeah. just now that maybe you should start actually doing it you know mm -hmm. uh, yeah i think it's uh, hold on just a second hold on And Dennis, I totally agree with you. All right. Sorry, my daughter is being indecisive about her stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, I think that um, a lot of it was dealing with my my fears for the personal reasons I, I mentioned. And well, like that, that's the thing. Was anyone actually telling you and preventing you from doing this? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> who, who was literally holding you back and said you can't do Star Wars artwork? Well, this would be great. Let me let me know exactly how how this happened. Well, uh, I I am graduated in publicity and in my country, which is Brazil, 
there is at least at 10 years ago when there's there was not not much internet it was really hard to find a job and, no no uh, that's all irrelevant you having okay. a job doesn't mean anything how does that stop mm -hmm. you from drawing so you're telling me just because you couldn't find a job you couldn't spend 30 minutes here and there doing star wars artwork uh not you, exactly that, you see my point like, yeah, I know. I'm making a larger point here. Okay, uh, I keep interrupting because I think you, you're you're going to keep the diverging. You need to really think about it. Was there anything that truly stopped you? Okay. No. No, nothing, right? Only like, of course, life is hard. And let me, let me uh, spoil alert. It's not going to get any easier. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> life is going to continuously throw curveballs at you, bud. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So with that fact then what can you do with that? Well, you have to come to the realization, if I want to do the things I want to do, then I just got to do them. I can't wait yeah. for life to get comfortable before I start doing the things I like. Yeah, right? Because it doesn't work that way. The difference between uh, me and any other artist that, like, like, for instance, I'm trying to get into, um, like, uh, game design, right? Mm -hmm. So I am just continuously in trying to learn. You know, any minute I can, like when I was uh, feeding my baby this morning, I was listening to a YouTube video on how to make game music, or at least the theory around it, because I don't know much about it. And this guy is like, he's way more advanced than I am capable of understanding, right? But it was nice to just listen to him and explain the, the beauty of like old school game music. Why? Because I want to eventually put music into my games. How? Mm -hmm. I'm going to use something called Beatbox, mm -hmm. which is this web designing or web uh, software that allows nice. you to just make 8-bit music. Wow, I need that. <laughs> well, how, well, how did I find this? You looked it up. Yeah, I just continuously, this is like, and then I was when I was going to Target last night to get my wife um, um, some bags for her uh, breast milk mm -hmm. I was watching videos and then I was like something came to me I was like what if like I can hum and then turn my hum into 8-bit music because 8-bit music isn't really complicated you can't it's, it's just really low bit but like, like sound it's a lot about the composition right yeah so I, if I as long as I can hum in tempo I could probably make 8-bit music from my microphone on my phone convert that mm -hmm. into AB music, but I haven't tried it. I could be completely wrong. I could realize it is a whole hurdle. Like I, as I was looking into it, there was something uh, people were saying that you have to have MIDI files. And I was like, MIDI files, what the, you know? And so mm -hmm. before I had no knowledge and experience, but now I have some knowledge and some experience. I'm better than I was yesterday, mm -hmm. you know? And then, you know, 20 years from now, when I'm known for whatever it may be, right? Let's say it is game art and design. People will ask me these very similar questions, like, how did you become such a great game designer? Or how did you become a certain certain so-and-so? Just like you guys asked, like, how did I become a good concept artist, right? The, sure. the answer is never going to change. So... The practical advice I've given you is the same practical advice. This this pie in the sky idea of like chase your dreams, I agree, is too too vague. That's why I then tell people the reason why you don't accomplish these things is because of lack of focus. Yeah. That's it. And I wish it was more complicated. Right? So that there would be like some sort of uh, quest, right? Like in a video game, but no, it's it's simple. And the the problem is is that it's so simple that people don't believe it. Uh, I, right? I, I I believe in you. I believe in you. The the um, I think the biggest factor is the the one you were discussing last last time was uh, theory. Yeah. So so let I, me let me explain to you that you don't believe then. Because if you truly did, then you wouldn't be you wouldn't let that fear hold you back. You wouldn't let that be paral like paralyzing. 
because you don't believe that it's true. Subconsciously, you just don't. Yeah. Hey, consciously, yeah, little... yeah, consciously you understand, right? We can sit here and agree yeah. all day. But when it comes to pen to paper, you don't believe it. You're afraid that it might not turn out the way that people are suggesting. And I'm trying yeah. to tell you, no, it's not. It's it's pretty much accurate. Like some people get opportunities faster than others, right? But that's all irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Stan Lee is in his 90s, right? He's going to die, dude, real soon. And, and Marvel knows it. They're like doing everything they can. But let me tell you, Marvel has only kicked off in the last few decades. So in his sure. late 70s, pretty much, was the most successful his franchise has ever been. Right? Um, right. Marvel was always popular before, but not at this level. And that's what he was always trying to go to. Because it, was, it, wasn't, because it wasn't so popular, he actually had to sell it. He was almost going to go bankrupt. You know, comic books were starting to fade. People didn't want to read them anymore, right? When television and video games started to come in, you know, other ways to interact with, like, yeah. media. I remember they almost, the... Yeah, they almost went bankrupt. Yeah. I have a lot of friends who work on, on Marvel and DC, so. Yeah, and so, so, yeah, and so, and then now it's completely changed, right? People are now consuming that media easier, better, like, through web comics and so forth. Um, mm -hmm. And so, and now the movies are making it more popular, right? Because movies are just like large advertisements for the projects. But anyways, I'm, I'm getting distracted. My point is, mm -hmm. is that like, you know, it took him a while, right? Right. And, and it's all always about consistency that I've noticed in the many people that I've met throughout my whole career, I haven't met any single person, you know, that mm -hmm. just said, you know, I woke up one day and dude, now I'm a, a badass, right? Or now I'm doing what I want to do. And don't worry, man, you're not alone. This is this is you, not unique to you. You're not a unique little snowflake. Yeah, I, right? I know. It's it, it's one thing to – because I, I think that I, I if I – really put my hand into stuff, I, I, re I get good results. Like the first Comic-Con oh, I ever went, totally. it, it was awesome. Like yeah, I, I, dude, saw... I believe that, and I believe you, right? And my point when... is that if you want to do the Star Wars things, you said it yourself. You think you could do it if you just do it. So then yeah, start sure. doing it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's really, really that simple. And I'm glad to hear that you already kind of started. Um, I feel like this question is more wrapped around, again, that fear. Like, well, is there anything else? Is yeah. there, I'm missing something. Yeah. And I'm like trying to tell you, no, you're not missing anything. Now, obviously, there's, there's nuances, right? There's going to be nuances, like the kinds of things that you'll learn from talking to people that work on Star Wars or learning the art style of Star Wars or reading the books and learning more about the world. You're going to become more of an expert than I will ever know, right? Because I'm mm -hmm. not interested in that world. But the formula is the same to become a master of that thing. Uh, there's a really good book. If you haven't read it, I want you to read it. You can get the audio book if you don't like to read. It's, All right. it's called uh, Mastery. Mastery. Mm -hmm. Read it. Okay. Basically, this book entails everything that I'm saying, just in written form, and but it gives you an ungodly amount of reference. It demonstrates time and time again that this is just true. This is like the wall of the universe. The more something happens, the more um, it gets stronger. It just gets better, right? It's just yeah, the wall it, of the land. Funny. It's it's funny you say that because the um, I I really believe that when you when you actually decide something, uh, things starts see, things starts happening so you can get that. Yeah, and, and, and I don't think that's a I don't think that's a a matter of coincidence. I think that's just a matter that yeah. now you're just actually doing it and you're now actively engaging and looking for it. Yeah, and it was funny because I had um, the Comic Con in Brazil is really big, so you can make like 10 grand in four days. You oh, that's know? Cool. It's a lot of money. So, and I, I went every year, and this year I don't know why I, I wasn't selected. And all of a sudden I was doing this comic book project and did the writer went to me and said, okay, I don't want to do that anymore. So it was like after I realized that I wanted Star Wars, everything that was getting in the way, even the things that I actually was, were, was looking for, they just vanished out of the blue, you know? 
just as they started it. Yeah. You know, so and uh, let me tell you, like, life has a funny way of just like throwing stuff in your way to kind of give you some perspective. Let me, let me, uh, I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to tell you some stories and then I'm going to move on to a, another question. Okay. Okay. Because I think I, I've answered this before and, I, and I'll answer it again and I'm going to give you some more practical tools. Okay. 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 So, the first thing I'm going to tell you is a story. Uh, there's an artist that I know and he uh, is an exceptionally good artist. And I met him in Croatia. And we were hanging out and then we were talking shop, right? He was talking about his career and stuff. I was talking about my stuff. But, you know, we became really good friends. And then we started talking. And he's like, he's like, do you mind uh, if I tell you my story? And I was like, yeah, go for it, man. Like, I want to hear it all the time. I want to get more analytics on this stuff. And so he, he goes into detail, tell about his life, and like how he got there. And I think it all started because we were talking about how like, a lot of our students just don't like, like to grasp this idea that it's super simple which is work hard. And, uh, and, and he was like, yeah, you know, what bothers me is that a lot of these people are very lucky because the way that my story works is that when I was just starting out, I was homeless. And I was like, oh, man, that sucks. He's like, no, like, for a real homeless person, like on the streets begging for money, kind of homeless. And I'm like, whoa, really? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, the way it, like, like, to describe how homeless he was, he said, like, one time he had a piece of bread that someone gave him, and there was another homeless person that he thought it was his friend, and he was like, hey, you know, you want some bread? And the other homeless person was so desperate for that whole bread, he pulled out a knife and stabbed my friend, and then took the bread wow. from him, you know. But luckily, he said, he wasn't the kind of homeless person that was addicted to drugs or anything like that. He just was had nowhere mm -hmm. to live. He didn't have any family. He was an orphan. And so because he was an orphan and because he didn't, you know, have that um, world of support outside of, you know, just other bums and people, random people on the street, he was pretty much lived on the streets. And then one day um, uh, he got noticed because he does these little artworks to sell to make, to make money, to, to, to get some food and take showers and what have you. That's what he did. He was an artist. And uh, one day, some guy saw his artwork and said, this is actually really good. And we could use someone like you to help us make more concepts, right? Because this is, like, really, really bizarre, and I like, I like it. I like the little look of it. And he's like, oh, I would love that, you know? And the guy's like, yeah, let's do it. Let's give you an art test. And uh, if you do well, you know, we'll go from there. And so then my friend, like, obviously spends the whole time just – working on this artist makes amazing artwork. The guy finds him again on the street. He, he gets the, the art, right? Uh, because mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what my friend told him to do is come back and I'll give it to you. He's like, okay, great. And so then he came back, he got it. He's like, this is freaking dope. Like you, you did a really good job. Uh, and basically went through the channels to eventually give him the job full time. So he got the job. But here's the thing. He went to the producer the first day, goes to the producer and says to the producer, uh, is there any way that I can have my first month's rent or my first month's pay? And the, the producer is obviously like, what? Like, why? <laughs> you know? And he was like, well, I didn't tell you about this, but I'm like homeless. I don't have anywhere to live. And I'm going to use this month's pay to just, like, stay in a hotel for a little bit and uh, get a clean shower and stuff so I don't come in a little nasty. And some food. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? And the producer, obviously, compassionate, was like, holy smokes, right? I didn't even know that. So they, they the whole team worked together to kind of get him on his feet. Right? So nice. Because they didn't know that, like, uh, the guy that even hired him didn't, like, or the, gave him the opportunity thought, like, he was just some, some, like, you know, college kid or something, <laughs> you know, just, like, working off his loans or something like that. No, like, this guy was for real home homeless. That artist wow. today, is, he goes by the alias Sick Brush. You might have known him. And mm. he um, is now the art director at Ubisoft. Wow. Yeah. 
So and it's really good. So, yes. And so think about it. Wow. What was holding you back? Holding you? Right? Put some perspective on your life, right? And you'll start to realize, like, whatever hardships you may have had, I'm sure they were pretty bad. And I'm not going to downplay them. But there are people mm -hmm. there are people who have it even worse and found ways, right? And then all, that's always something to keep in mind. Uh, there's a, another good example that I'm going to give you, and then I'm going to give you some practical advice again, okay, other than staying focused. So another story is about the, the pole the the pole vaulter from Kenya. I think his name is Julius or Julie Diego or something like that. Some uh, pole vaulter from Kenya and basically he decided he wanted to be a pole vaulter. I'm not sure exactly when and why, but he just decided to. Okay. And in Kenya, I'm not sure if you know this, they don't have pole vaults. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, they don't just sell them at the market. Okay, there's no place to just buy a pole vault. But he went and made his own. They didn't have gyms either, like like really nice elaborate gyms. Like, and, similar to Arnold Schwarzenegger's story. Yeah, and so he just basically um, just made his own gym out of his apartment, like in this, the stairway. He just, like, used certain equipment to kind of create the kinds of uh, workout that he needed, right? And And not only that... Worst of all, of course, it sucks to not even have a pole vault and all that stuff. There was nobody in Kenya that could teach him how to become a pole vaulter. But he was so fascinated with it. He loved it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So yeah. he spent, I believe, like an hour a day because they had like this shared internet uh, resource, like a cafe, right? And he would spend like an hour a day watching YouTube videos, taking notes, learning different techniques from YouTube. Okay, he did this for years, and now he's one of the. I think he's he might hold the world record. I'm not sure, but he is an Olympic pole vaulter. So, my point to you, Andre, is I don't have that much sympathy for people in our world. Okay, when it comes right. to not doing the things that you would like to do, especially things that are within reason, okay? Right. Because you have resources at your disposal. The fact, and I know this because the fact that you were able to afford my class, right? Sure. The fact sure. that you have access to the internet because my class is online, right? These, just, just, just these two simple facts is enough for me to know the kind of class that you're in. Maybe you're in like a studio apartment and you eat top ramen, you know, for lunch or dinner, you know, mm -hmm. that's fine. That's better than being bombed in Syria and having no idea that yeah. house of art is a real job. Yes. Right. Yes. So you are amongst the wealthiest of the people on this planet, not just in terms of income, but also in terms of access. All right. And you should exploit that as best you can is all I'm getting at, okay? Now, obviously, context matters. You know, there are some things that make it harder for us to live in this society that we are belonging to, right? Uh -huh. But the fact that you have access to a lot of these things is, is reasons why I, I, I'm pretty strict about, like, saying, what's holding you, truly, what's holding you back? Is there, like, literally a guy in your home that has a gun to your head and says, if you chase your dreams? I will murder your firstborn, right? <laughs> I, don't, mm -hmm. I doubt that. Yeah. And if yeah. that's the case, blink twice. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but but you, you hear what I'm getting at, like where I'm going with all this? And so, okay. So, and I think you understand this, but now, like like I said, your fear is is, is paralyzing. And I'm trying to yeah, say, there's, there really isn't anything to fear because um, 10 years have gone by and you haven't chased your dreams and you're not dead, are you? Yeah, sure. Right? Like, you're you're still living. You're still doing stuff. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, uh, in terms of ch chasing what you wanted to do, you failed. But nothing terrible happened to you, did it? Right? Yeah. And so, uh, it seems like you lost opportunities, but you've done that. That's happened before. Right? So, it's 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 fine. You're fine. 
So if you're going to fail, at least fail in the direction that you want to go. Right? Fail upwards. Yeah, fail <laughs> towards where you really want to be versus just where other people are telling you to be or where you feel like is the safest. Because safe will keep you going in circles. True. Okay. All right, so now some practical advice. Um, get get some someone else. Get like a friend to keep you accountable. Like have someone else to go along with you on this journey. This is actually really helpful. Because mm -hmm. doing it alone is hard, but doing it with someone else is much easier. So when I was going to school, I, I had the benefit of uh, having other students that were around my age and just just as interested in the career that I was, you know? Mm -hmm. And so hanging out with these types of people was really helpful. This is why I built the Discord. I built the Discord not just because I think, oh, it's a cool idea to have a community. No, like, community is king, man. Mm -hmm. I hang out with a lot of my students that live locally, often. You know, I go to their baby showers, we, we hang out, We they have, like, parties, I go to their parties and events. You know, not just because, mm -hmm. like, I'm trying to be a good teacher, uh, make that money by just being a good person or something like that. No, I, that's just who I was before, and as a consequence of being a good person, you just happen to have more success. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Being a, being a complete jerk off, you get success faster, but you won't feel complete. Look at Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, sure. Right? <laughs> you nailed it. And so, and so my quality of life is pretty high. I, I have a real, I'm very happy. And so what I'm trying to say to you is to do that, you have to stay focused and have an accountability or accountability, accountability buddy, right? Someone that, like, and that's why, like, in class, that exists because you have me to keep you accountable. You have your classmates to try to, to, to compete with. You know, in a friendly way, not in a, in a way where you're like, you know, try to take their jobs. Uh -huh. But just like in a way where like, oh yeah, like so and so did such a good job. I want to try to see if I can match that. You know, that's that's healthy. Mm -hmm. Versus like, oh man, that so and so is really really good. I'll never make it. That's not healthy, right? That's why I built right. the community is because I think it's it's really valuable. And I think you can find friends there. You can reach. Uh, there's there's a feedback section. You can have people give you advice and take that advice. You know? Okay. And and to stay consistent. So there's the daily 2D that we have on the Discord. Post every day something related to your dream of working for on a Star Wars film. All right. Because the daily 2D made aid for people to suck. Meaning that no one's necessarily going to give you feedback there. It's just a place to just keep yourself accountable, put it there, and have some support. Okay. And then uh, feedback is obviously for feedback if you want some more help, right? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And then uh, aside from that, do the homework for the class. I will. And, and, and maybe do Star Wars illustrations, like maybe change some of the subject matter, the designs, to more Star Wars theme. Because those are ambiguous enough that we can totally do that. Yeah, I, I thought about that. Like, it's not like um, I'm, I'm basically doing the same kind of work. <laughs> yeah, let's just do it. Right. Yeah. And uh, okay. And just stay on task. Don't be distracted by these little things, and you'll. And hopefully, like, you know, like five or six years from now, you're going to be doing a talk on how mm -hmm. to do Star Wars design. Yeah. <laughs> Featuring Anthony Jones. <laughs> no. I'll be the <laughs> Okay? Yeah. It'll, it'll take some time. Okay. You'll, get, you'll, you'll get there, man. And it looks like they're not, Star Wars is not going anywhere. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, that's, that's that what I thought. Today. <laughs> so you'll, you'll have time. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought about that. It's it's there's a difference between uh, doing something that you really really want mm -hmm. and doing something that you know that you can do. Yeah. Even if you go really well at that, it does it, it's not full, as fulfilling. Yeah. So, so I I think you're on the right you, track. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. Totally. Honestly. Yeah. And if you ever have any more it, questions in the future, you're always welcome to ask. Don't worry about it. All right. All right. Thanks. I hope it, it helped everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You totally made my day, man. 
<laughs> glad to hear that, man. That's what that's what I love to do. See, okay, Oscar so, believes in you, and that's all that matters. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever Oscar believes. <laughs> all right. Okay, so right, we're going on. Yeah, of course, man. So the next next person I think had a question was uh, Jack, right? You had about the carpal tunnel stuff. Oh yes, exactly. And uh, I have other questions about it. I think this one is going to be my first one. Okay. Well, because I obviously or work my hands and yes, it hurts like for the rest of the day. Okay, so a few things that I would suggest. Um, the the first thing that I would suggest is uh, limiting the amount of saturated fat and cholesterol that you have because mm -hmm. um, there's a few symptoms of heart disease and one of them mm -hmm. is any kind of artery or any kind of vein based um, disease. So like if like the tingling of your hands and arms and whatever, right? Because what that implies is that there's blockage, and the the types of uh, nutrients that block it are heavy lo loads of saturated fat and uh, cholesterol. Because I had it pretty bad too. I remember when I would paint every five minutes, I would have to lift my arm above my head. Yeah. Which sucked, right? Oh. And. But I, I had to do it, right? Like I'd just paint all the time, and I would, every five minutes, have to put my hand up and leave it up there for like a, several seconds. And then, uh, you know, I, I started feeling really bad. My health started going down, so then I, I changed my diet um, to mostly plant-based, and then now I'm completely plant-based, you know. Huh. And I didn't really think about it. I just was, I was more focused on my health. I didn't really think about carpal tunnel. Right? I was more focused on oh. just trying to feel better you know and i discovered there was a tumor and it was just like it got really out of hand right and so mm -hmm. but once all that stuff once i started changing what i was eating um uh my carpal tunnel just kind of evaporated huh. yeah it's because like it's just clogged right and your body will naturally figure it out if you give it the right ammunition and so i'll like it's amazing. As I was eating more vegetables, right, I was eating, like, more, uh, you know, the the obvious stuff, like greens, like kale and spinach and all that stuff. But then I started switching to just, just completely plant-based. So I was eating more potatoes, starchy foods like rice, um, mm -hmm. uh, beans, lentils, along with, like, more fruits and veggies. Uh, yeah, it just started going away. Huh. And I, I looked it up, and apparently it, it's it's one of the factors that um, helps it, uh, fix that type of stuff is basically uh, switching your diet up a bit. And one thing that uh, they say is like sometimes it gets too far removed where you have to have surgery, right? Because it's oh. just so bad, it's so clogged up, you know. Just like you'd have to have a, a bypass surgery for your heart when your heart is clogged up mm -hmm. with this cholesterol and saturated fat. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so then. Um, I always recommend this to some of my students and I had a few of them say that they felt way better. Like it went away as well, almost immediately. Not like in a day, but like a few months. It, takes, it doesn't take too long. And, okay. and that, that's one, that's one issue. Now, another issue is, so that's, that's a one that's like outside of your control. Like that's because you're not necessarily outside. It's just like, cause you're not paying attention to what's going in. This, this is what this is the result of what's coming out, right? But yeah. but then there's another factor which I'll talk about right now, which is just your actual uh, pen handling. Oh yes, yeah. because you could have you could, might not have carpal tunnel. You might just have cramping. No, I don't have it. It just hurts a lot. Like I'm sure I still don't have this like severe uh, health disorder. But okay. I just afraid I might get it in the future. Yeah, and so so then if you have cramping, which would be the other variable then it doesn't matter what you're eating. It's the way you're doing it. Like yeah. you're basically pushing really hard with your brush. Okay. Mm, I, I, mine is, it might be an issue. And actually, um, either like it's the best way to hold my pen because uh, like some people actually hold pen with three fingers, some people with four fingers. Like how I hold my pen is basically 
uh, my ring finger is basically uh, having all the pressure. So basically, uh, you know, like four fingers. Yeah. I, is, is it all I, KOA? Or yeah, I've seen not, people not do really? that. Yeah, it's, it's not a matter of whether you're using your, because I see what you're saying. I, I can do that right now, too. Oh. Right? Yeah, it definitely feels awkward. So basically, less pressure. But, oh. but it's a, but what it really is, is just like you're pushing down on it. You're putting a lot of pressure on it. Because if you if you weren't putting a lot of pressure on it, then you um, wouldn't be having these issues. All right. And so uh, I had a student that had the same thing, and I was like, pay attention to like whenever you're painting, like stop and look at your hand and say like, how hard are you pushing to get the result that you're getting? For instance, um, this is me. This is me pushing at full intensity of this brush. Right. And then my percentage uh, myself, like the actual strength that I'm putting into this, is mm -hmm. probably like 15% of my strength. Oh. Right? And then this is like 100% of my strength. Oh. See the difference? Not really, right? So that's oh, the point. Perfect. That's my point. Like, if you're pushing 100% all the time, or even like a high 80s, right? Mm -hmm. That's how you start cramping your fingers. Just find the minimal amount of effort to get you to that, to the same result that you need to do when you push super hard. Okay? Mm -hmm. And a good way to exercise this is just to try to start light and then get push harder and harder and harder and harder until you go to your maximum and then just see where that's at. And then try to see if you can go lighter. Like how light can you push for it to, to get the results that you're looking for? Because I can push very, very light as well as push uh, hard, but my hard is not very difficult. So I don't cramp very often. I mean, I don't cramp at all. But I had the couple tunnel for real. That was like a real underlining problem. And that, 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 was, a, that was a pain in the butt. But that's gone now. You don't have to worry about that. Well, I guess I don't really have... Oh, I, okay, last question. But it's not really art related. It's rather like uh, talking to people. And as mm -hmm. some people noted previously, um, I have this sort of uh, confidence issue. Like when sometimes I get extremely nervous, like uh, like right before the scan uh -huh. session when you were revealing my stuff, and I would like know how can I fix it. Like people try and people people keep saying like just be more relaxed, but I'm trying and it just doesn't help. For instance, when I talk to my peers, uh, like people of my age. It's sort of non-existent issue because they're like my age, we are like on the same level. But when it comes to talking to authorities, and definitely right now you are one of such authority because like obviously like uh, older person, more like a lot more respect person, and etc. And this makes me very nervous because I'm really afraid to say anything that might or offend somebody or anything else. Just just yeah. I, I'm trying to think of every my word and therefore get very nervous. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, this is something that I learned when I was in acting class when I was in high school. When I was uh, in acting class, one of the things that I discovered, uh, I, I'm very observant, so I paid attention to how I felt when I was in front of people, and I, I, I paid attention to how I felt watching other people. Mm -hmm. And when I was watching other people, I was like, really rooting for them not to fail you know like when they would mess up i'd be like oh no you know there's a whole reason why it's called like cringe right mm -hmm. like that's a thing and when i I, re I came to the realization that you know most decent people because i consider myself a decent person um are rooting for you you know it's the only times when people really mm -hmm. laugh at you is like when there's like a disconnect, like on YouTube, right? When you're watching like fail compilations, like there's a disconnect yeah. there. So you can laugh at them because it's, it's fun. It's funny because you don't think you'll interact with them. But the reality is it is still kind of harsh. But yeah. when it comes to like me talking to you, um, I'm not going to lose my mind over, over anything, right? I'm not going to yell at you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, unless you say something that deserves to be yelled at, but I don't think it's going to happen. And uh, and the reason why people say, oh, yeah, you should just relax, like, I, I understand that. 
like that's true but it's not practical it's very similar to what andre was saying like just chase your dreams like yeah that's duh it's um it's not necessarily a practical advice but it is true advice meaning that it, it, they're right that you should relax you know but okay. but like you said in practice it's not that easy Yes. Okay. So uh, what I've learned with specific students that have these types of predicaments um, is something I like to just say is managing it. You know, I have people in my life that I know that have lots of anxiety in their life, and I have tried to find ways for them to manage it and try to ways for them to understand it. And like, I have a really good friend who's an artist who had like really severe anxiety issues. And I, I told him to manage it by slowly but surely, like work on something, and then after several months or moments, take a break and then try again. You know, like take break off, okay. take breaks often. And so then, what I'm trying to say to you is something very similar. Is that like okay? So if you feel like really nervous in front of somebody of authority, specifically, right? Yes. Um, what can you do to manage that? So maybe what you can do is before you approach them, think to yourself that at one point they were in your position as well, where they were just a student and they were trying to learn or they were just a, a subordinate and they were trying to advance, right? And and if you were a person in authority, um, you would totally understand your predicament, right? Mm -hmm. And so then... If you approach this person, you understand that that person's not maliciously going to try to in, like, actively hurt you. And if they do, which is, could happen, there's people out there that are really great artists, but they're not really good people, okay? Then you could say, well, although that person is a good person or a good artist and I appreciate their artwork, um, yeah, I don't think I'll associate myself with them anymore because of how they handle themselves, All right? So let me give you a couple examples. All right, because I'm not, I don't get nervous with talking to people. I'm not a very shy person. I'm actually very uh, charismatic, right? I can talk to anybody if I want to. It's funny because whenever I go out with my wife's friends, um, mm -hmm. they think that I'm super shy because I don't talk too often. But my wife oh. knows me better, right? She knows that I'm not shy at all. And she always tells them, it's like, well, it's not because um, he's shy. It's because, you know, he doesn't want to bore you guys with the kind of stuff that he talks about, right? because <laughs> oh. I'm really interested in all this like art stuff and nerdy things and I know uh, her friends aren't necessarily into that kind of stuff if they start talking about whatever they want to talk about then I am more than happy to continue dialogue about that you know which I usually do but I know like um, it's not that they uh, can't hold a conversation it's that I just don't they don't they wouldn't really find it interesting you know mm -hmm. and that's totally fair wait what did you say <laughs> my wife said they're not smart enough <laughs> no that, that's not the point the problem is is that like i just know like um small talk is like where they're comfortable with and that's where i'm comfortable talking with them right but when i go to, like yeah. convention where like there's all these other artists and like-minded people then we could talk for days about like movies and video games and stuff like that you know yeah. because this is common interest and so but what I've learned um, by myself is that, like, I, I'm not afraid of looking like a fool, you know? I don't feel embarrassed if I say something stupid. If I make it a mistake, then I just kind of laugh about it and say, yeah, that's funny. And and so what, I, uh, what I've learned is, like I said, people are on your side. And so, let, like I said, I'm going to tell you some stories. So let me tell you a story. Um... I'm going to start you on a sandwich. This. I'm going to start with a good story, then a bad story, then a good story. So we'll start with a good one. So when I was just a student and I was trying to break it into industry, I wanted to get my portfolio reviewed by a really well-known artist named Nathan Fowkes. And Nathan Fowkes is super epic. He's one of the best artists out there. And so I... Um, I went up to him and I was like, yeah, I would love to get my portfolio reviewed. And he said, yeah, I'd be more than happy to review it. Um, he's like, just give me one moment. I'm talking to this person. And I said, like, all right, yeah, totally reasonable. <laughs> right? And so then I'm waiting there, waiting there. And then he, um, 
eventually goes to to he's almost finished talking with this person and then another person just walks up doesn't necessarily cut in front of me or anything just walks up right there's no line anyway it's just mm-hmm. like standing next to me and then as soon as nathan is done talking this person jumps right in and starts talking to nathan but like they're clearly friends like they they know each other they're like oh hey it's good to see you i have seen you whatever right they start they start a conversation but nathan before they get really into it, Nathan's like, yeah, you know, but just give me one moment. I promised this young gentleman that I would talk to him. So let me just talk to him and then we'll, we can catch up, you know? Yeah. And remember that because I actually was okay with him talking to his friend because I was just like, this is like someone I admire, you know? Like he can yeah. talk to his friends. It's fine. I'll wait, <laughs> you know? And yeah. after it was done, uh, I was able to talk to him. Uh, I, I, not like he gave me some good advice on the portfolio, but he gave me better advice about how to approach students. You know, treat them as equals. Okay. And that that's it, that taught me a lot. And so whenever I go to these events, I do the same thing. I do the same thing that he did. Like I will not like sometimes my good friends will, hey, we're gonna go somewhere. I'm like, hold on, let me finish these reviews. And I learned that from Nathan. So I said, yeah, mm-hmm. like, what makes me better than somebody else? All I did was just paint a lot. Right. And so um, that was a really powerful message that I learned from him. So here's a negative story. So there's a really popular artist, artists that you guys might admire, that you might think are really great. And you might even think they're great people. But behind closed doors, behind the curtains, uh, they're not. There's one artist that uh, was talking to and very condescending very negative about the industry in general and about students, people are uh, approaching their careers, right? And he even made a comment about how he's like, you know, I'm sick of these artists coming up to me and trying to ask me like how to make it. Like, I'm just sick and tired of it. Like these people are just, to me, I just see these people as just bags of, just bags of meat with ideas. And it makes me sick. And I remember hearing that and I was like, these are the same people that have brought you to where you're at, you know? Mm-hmm. Exactly. What a jerk. And if I told you who this person was, it would shock you. This is how deceptive it is, okay? And luckily, though, Obviously, yeah. I'm not going to tell you because it's not my place. I'm just saying okay. that these people <laughs> exist. Mm-hmm. And so um, when you meet these people and you do find them, yeah, keep it to yourself, you know? If you meet other people that know too, then you, know, you share it amongst each other, right? But because it's it's professional, that's a professional way of going about it, you know. And so, if they did something truly terrible, like he is just saying stupid stuff, and he's just being kind of a jerk person behind curtains, he wasn't hurting anybody. He's just kind of a mean spirited person. Is he okay? Okay. I thought my little baby was choking on milk. Um, anyway, uh, you know you know what I'm saying? And so uh, people are just like that because you can be a great artist and still be a jerk. <laughs> okay. So just remember that. And so so I, I've completely detached myself from this person. I don't associate with myself with them. I don't like to even hang out with them or even find a lot of time because they have done p- repetitive things consistently that have been pretty negative. Um, and there's several artists that I can think of that have done that, that I've completely avoided or avoid. But the majority, I would say 99% of the rest of the artists I know are amazing. So it's very small, okay? Uh-huh. You're gonna run into more awesome people than you're gonna run into jerks, okay? And so um, the next story is a, is, a, is a fun story that I think will relate to your situation. So when I was, uh, again, a student, I was going to Nomen, right? Uh, I wasn't going there. I was just going to workshop, and I saw one of my favorite artists, Paul Richards, do a demo, and it was amazing. And I saw him after the, the, the talk, and I said, look at my portfolio. He gave me some great advice about the designs, specifically about shapes. And then I bought two of his books. He signed them, and it was great. Super nice guy. Was very friendly. Again, very patient with every single person that approached him. He's super pessimistic. You know, you could totally be a pessimistic person, but be amazingly nice. That that can happen. He just like doubts everything. <laughs> but 
but he doesn't talk trash about people. He just talks trash about designs and the world. Like he talks about the 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 universal use, you know, but never to anyone specific. And so I've always loved those personalities. Very very contrast to mine. Um, and so then uh, the reason why I even know this is because about a year or two later, uh, he comes and gets a job from Blizzard. He lives in Irvine. That's my neighborhood. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, dude, Paul Richards. You know, so I emailed him and I said, hey, you know, I just saw that you got a job on Facebook on uh, a Blizzard, and I would love for you to come to our sketch group. And he was like, yeah, of course. And at the time, I was working at Sony Santa Monica. So I had some street cred now, right? And I used that street cred to kind of get his attention, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and he he came to our workshop, or not workshop, our sketch groups, and he would draw with us for like consecutively for weeks. And it was great. It was really nice. And then one day I said, hey, Paul, do you remember me? Do you remember me from the Nomen workshop? And he was like, nah. And I was like, dude. Like, you reviewed my portfolio, you gave me really good advice, you know? Um, and I've been mm-hmm. taking that advice very seriously ever since, and uh, and I just wanted to say thank you. And he's like, no, 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 no. He's like, you didn't go to another workshop. Like, I would have remembered you. Like, it must have been a different situation. Like, you know, you don't remember correctly. And I'm like, no, no, I remember perfectly. Like, you changed my life. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he was just like, he's like, no, I don't remember you. And He's like, and I was like, I would have remembered you. Your work's great. And I was like, no, no, no. My work's good now. But back then, it was trash. <laughs> you know? It was like, your advice made it better. And uh, and he just couldn't believe it. And I was like, I even bought books from you, man. And you signed them. And he's like, what? Really? And I was like, yeah. So I'll bring him in next sketch group. I'll show you. I'll prove it to you. And so next sketch group comes up, and I show it to him. And he's just like, oh, my gosh. Like, I feel terrible. Like I, I feel like a, a really bad person. Like I should have remembered you, you know. And I told him I was like, "Look, why would you have remembered me? I was like amongst a sea of other young artists that had terrible artwork, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Like I, I didn't. If you would have remembered me, that would have been really amazing. But I, I wasn't. You know, I wasn't uh, like having sleepless nights over it. You know what I mean? And so, because I understand this one simple idea is that, you know, people are people and nobody is perfect, right? And and I told him, like, what matters is that the way you treat me now, knowing that I am a good artist, right, and having these yes. variables is no different than how you treated me when I wasn't a good artist. I said, that's actually what I value more out of this whole situation, you know? So like, yeah, you may have forgotten who I was, which was understandable, but you didn't change your character. You know, like you seem like the same person. You know? And that's very valuable to me, and that's why I think we'll become good friends. And then we did. You know? <clears throat> and so I always tell people, like, you know, when I say network, I'd say make friends. Because when you network, networking implies you only talk to the people that are important to your career. And that, those could be the art directors, the lead game designers, producers, et cetera, right? They're already working for these big companies. Mm-hmm. But guess what? Yeah. You know, your colleagues, your students that are around you, they're trying to get jobs too. They are also going to be epic one day, you know? And so not mm-hmm. only is it just good practice just to be a decent person to people in general, right? It's actually mm-hmm. a good, uh, uh, it's good hindsight in terms of networking as well, because one day those people will be art directors for big companies and they'll be like, hey, you know, I remember Jack Savage, you know? <laughs> like, he was a cool guy. You know, he'd help me out with this thing. Like, I would love to get him a job here. Because people want to work with their friends. They don't want to work with other employees. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, uh, with all that being said, there's nothing to be nervous about. Because if people treat you like trash and you did nothing wrong, like, objectively... Okay. Yeah, you might have made a, a, a slip here and there with what you were trying to say, or you made you embarrassed because of your language barrier or like accents or whatever. That's that's all superficial problems. Okay. If you go up to somebody, you push them down a flight of stairs and you spit on them, and then you say, 
uh, you know, you say, hail the B666, 666. Six, six, six. <laughs> you know, then, then that's a little extreme, and I don't know how to save you from that situation. It's really intense. Yeah. Okay? But I don't think you're going to do anything like that. And if you're, oh, yeah, and if you're that kind of person, just do freelance. Work from home. You can, do, you can have whatever belief system you want as long as you don't hurt any other, other person. <laughs> I mean, you can totally so believe in the that, beast. That's fine. It's I just, mean, you just mentioned there's a, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, but you just mentioned the problem might be in my like language barrier. In fact, I don't really think so. Uh, uh, one of the major problems, I believe, is actually in the environment I was growing. Uh, I, was, I, was growing I was growing in, in fact, like my college, four years I spent in my college. Like, the environment was almost toxic. All the teachers, uh, like, they did not respect anyone. So yeah, we were in you, constant fear. Yeah, so you you just had terrible contrast or context. That's all. But now you have better context. You know people like me now. who are way more positive. And uh, I, have, um, uh, I have a belief system. I'm optimistically pessimistic. <laughs> or optimistically skeptical. Meaning that... I look at the bright side of things, but I don't take things at face value. I, I try to think about it a little bit more, you know? Like if someone's doing something wrong, I'm like, I'd be critical of it. And so um, you can have both. You can be a, you can be a little bit stern and at the same time compassionate, you know? That's possible. And so mm-hmm. uh, let me tell you, like, and then I'm going to move on. I'm going to take on some other questions and we're going to end this class. Um, All right. mm-hmm. But, like, uh, I learned that you know, this harsh uh, teaching method, like if you really uh, sit down and just like berate and, and really murder people's work in front of them and try to embarrass them and shame them, that doesn't work as, as effective as just empathy, like trying to find common ground. Um, but, you know, if there's a pattern of like inconsistent listening, then you have to be stern too. You got to like just let them know that this is like a real problem that they're facing. You know, nobody at this class really had it that bad because I have, hadn't had enough examples of it. For instance, I had a student who was like, I was taking my class for like several months. And I think after the third month, I was like, listen, you know, stop taking my class because you're just not listening to my advice and you just keep turning in junk, you know, and you're wasting my yes. time and you're wasting your, your, your student or your classmates time. And, um, and more importantly, your own time, right? Like, I don't want to keep feeding this idea that you're going to succeed if you're not even trying, you know, and that worked. Like he, he totally flipped the script because I told him, I was like, look, like you can, you can lead a horse to water, right? But if the horse doesn't want to drink it, what can you do? You know? And, and, uh, he, he's, he understood that very, very, very clearly, but that's usually my last resort. And I need more evidence. You know, I need to very clearly see that this is the kind of personality that you have. Uh, otherwise, I usually give people the benefit of doubt, and I try to find solutions. Like, for instance, like Carlos, right? Like, it will be easy to just say he's lazy, right? With this, the lack of effort he was putting in the first few assignments. But no, I was like, no, this is usually attached to certain parameters, and we discussed what those were, and it seems like uh, uh, the advice I gave him was helpful, right? Mm-hmm. Now, if, if he didn't submit anything for the next week and the following week, then I can start saying there's another pattern of problems, and we'll confront that. And if he took my class again, and I keep seeing these same problems, then I have more evidence to say, look, dude, you need to really, like, shape up. Otherwise, it's just, um, I don't know enough. I don't know you guys well enough to really make those deductions or assume. And so... Uh, like, I think you're right. Like, having that toxic environment uh, may have perpetuated this unnecessary insecurity, right? And I'll just tell you right now, the real world um, is definitely harsh, and people are harsh. But uh, if you just surround yourself with awesome people, then your reality will be much different. Like, I have a lot of people in my life that are mostly positive and amazing people, so I don't really have anything to complain about, you know? And you, you can start doing that today. There's the Discord. There's the people in this class. They All of the people in the class seem pretty like-minded and really positive, uh, but enthusiastic, right? Just start making new friends, uh, people that aren't I mean, constantly defecating on your own work for you, right? 
it's exactly what I've been doing this whole like this whole time. Yeah, that's great. And in fact, I, I I guess I already made a couple of nice friends. Yeah, just keep doing it, man. And uh, you'll you'll forget all about all that traumatic stuff that happened. <laughs> it's probably why you're also so indecisive about picking your artwork because you're just so afraid. <laughs> that fear is real, okay. man. That fear is real. No, it it makes sense. The things that happen to you. Uh, throughout your life affect the kind of personality you have, you know? I mean, there are more things to mention, but uh, frankly, I wouldn't mention them right now. Yeah. Basically, because I think it's inappropriate because it's, like, way too negative. Yeah, let's just let's just, let's just leave it at you had some rough patches mm -hmm. in your life, and now let's move past them, yeah? That's totally mm -hmm. understandable, man. Uh, you know that there's a thing called influenza? Have you heard of this? Uh, no, what's this? Yeah, it's something I just discovered. Um, there's a way of describing this whole situation with our president right now, America. Like, how can we have someone so corrupt and so, so, like, ignorant? <laughs> and so, well, what happened? This could happen to you when you have a life of wealth and no consequences, right? If you're raised your whole life never knowing that if you do something wrong, you can get severely punished for it, um, then mm -hmm. why would you ever assume that there was any sort of punishment? Yes. Yeah. As well, as well as that, you don't you, you don't know every little well your things. Yeah, and so for me, I uh, I was the only child, so I could have easily been spoiled, and I was, but because I moved a lot, I didn't have an opportunity to make a lot of friends, so I had to learn how to make friends. And then when I was in drama, uh, it was a good fit because I was already not embarrassed of who I was, right? And then, and then uh, moving around a lot also taught me that there's different cultures and faces and people. Living in Barstow, which is a very small town, it's pretty much a junk town, uh, gave me humility, knowing that the world can get pretty bad. You know, like across the street from my house uh, was a, a meth lab that exploded. You know, there was like other days where there's shotguns. I see hobos and all that stuff all the time. You know, and I have friends who've got shot and murdered. Right, so I understand. Yeah. yeah, so I understand that life can get dark too. You see, um, you know, and I, I continuously get experiences in my life. Like I, I first experience with raising children was with my wife. Right, I learned um, what it's like to have people that you have to take care of. Right, and then also when my own children were born, I was able to understand them a little bit better. And when my first daughter was born, I, I was not as good as a parent as I am now with my youngest boy. Well, not uh, anymore because I have my new baby. But now I'm even more patient with my baby than I was before because I had the previous two babies, you know? With every new experience, uh, I get better and better. I'm not perfect, but I get better, right? And so, like, you have to think about all these experiences add up and help you. And so if you want to add more positive experiences, then that's up to you as well. But don't take the mm -hmm. bad experiences for granted either. You know, like, for instance, my wife, she has, like, really great stories about her struggles and stuff, and I think those are very inspiring. And so I always think in context of that. You know, I was just, just in this morning, I was lecturing our, our oldest son about stuff like this, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, because he's lucky because he has what he, he – can, he can have whatever he wants, right? And he doesn't take advantage of that. And so – I'm very clearly trying to make this statement to you, you know, like take all these experiences, take all this knowledge and use it in a positive way. If you get nervous, then practice talking to people more and more often. Talk to authority more often. You know, it could be a cool strategy. Why don't you set up like a podcast and start interviewing some of your favorite artists? That could be a good way, you know, and have someone else accompany you, like a good uh, person. Uh, and you might think this is really hard to do, but trust me, that's what the Level Up guys did. And now the Level Up guys are people that you would want to interview. But the level up guys mean, literally did actually, that. Oh. Uh, actually, in fact, I tried to connect some of like like really great artists. Like I tried to connect Jamma Jirabai. I tried to contact Lady Petherfield and some other people like uh, Ross Strand as well. None of them ever replied. Yeah, so, I can help you. Just if you want to do something like really? that, let me know. Yeah, of course. I know them personally. Oh. I got street cred right. now. It's easier for me. <laughs> To be so great. Yeah, of course. No problems. All right. Do you, are you liking the robot dinosaur, by the way? 
Honestly, I really, really like it's like <laughs> I, I I just been doodling on one little spot the whole time because I feel like I'm done. Wow. I want to I want to try to convert him to pixel art. That's why I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to mess with them too much. Um, in fact, I'll, I'm gonna do that right now. All right, I'll take one more question and we'll end the class, y'all. Good questions though, appreciate them. Uh, yo, Anthony. What's up, buddy? Um, I guess I'll I'll, I'll ask last question if that's cool with everybody um yeah. i was gonna ask something sort of like basic like uh, I'm, I'm considering I, I just wanted to get your opinion on <clears throat> art center like what do you honestly think about that school um if you can afford it i'd say point. go to brainstorm it'll be cheaper the difference is you have to pay out yeah. of pocket but it's yeah it's and, remarkably cheaper and you'll yeah, get all the it's... education you'll need, and you'll be just fine. Cool. Um, and I guess uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you was, um, what, what like, so I'm I'm 24 right now, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm starting to sort of like build this this like value system in 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 like my daily life structure and. Uh, I, I was wondering, like, what what you really try to teach, like, younger artists in terms of this, like, in, like staying focused and not not getting too distracted, or what what recommendations do you have for um, in, in terms of having like a like a system of not necessarily like beliefs, but just s sort of like something to always fall back on. Um, so, uh, a good system is to start small. So a good way of thinking about this. Oh, what the mother? I keep forgetting that. Uh, hold on. Okay. Uh, is to start small. Okay. So I'm going to give you a little demonstration. Just, let me just animate this head moving. Yeah. Oh, man. Trying to learn the pixel art, though. Make pixel art games. <laughs> uh, hey, keep it old school. Yeah, right, dude. You see how <laughs> quickly I was able to make this into pixel art? Just using yeah. some fancy Photoshop tricks. Eating, man. I can, make, I can make it even more pixely arty. Look at that. No. Um... But I want to see the eye detail. That's important to me. Yeah, I was, I was so, a huge pixel art nerd when I was a kid. I was making, trying to make like sprite sheets and stuff and MS Paint failing miserably. So. That's fine. So I want to show you two lists. List A and then list B. And list A, um, you have what you want to do in, in the day. Let's say you want to do some concept art sketches. You want to get some breakfast. Uh, you want to do some workouts. You want to do some more studies and practice. You want to do some more sketches, do some homework, get some dinner, more practice and sketching. And this is all the kind of stuff you want to do, like check your emails, set up a art station, whatever it may be, like a lot of things. All right? And then list B, wake up 8 in the morning. Wake up one hour earlier than you normally wake up, let's say. Which list should you start with? Um, when I wake up, probably list B. I mean, yeah, yeah, right. No, I've kind of already hinted at start small, right? Yeah. And once you do the list B, do that for like a week and see if you can stay consistent. And if you can, then add another thing. Then add another thing. Uh, another thing, and then eventually you, you should have a built in like a really good work in yeah. the system, you know. Or you might realize the system that you thought you wanted is actually much shorter and more concise and pre precise and more uh, focused. And all the other stuff is just fluff, it's just dreams that you thought because you just, you just don't have a clue. Because usually what happens is people follow this first one, right. They say they're going to make a complete change in their, their schedule and their life. And what ends up happening is that they fall off faster because what 
what tends to happen is it's too much and they get overwhelmed and then they drop out. Yeah. So don't overwhelm yourself. Start start small. You know? And the next thing you'll know, you'll be accomplishing great feats. You know? And uh, that's all you got to know. Just start small and stay consistent and have an accountability person too. Like say, okay, I'm just going to do a one hour sketch every day. Something as simple as that. No matter what, right? No matter what is happening in your life, that's what you're going to do. Make sense? Yeah. And then uh, the next thing you know, you'll be kicking some serious butt. Cool. And I, I, I guess just since that's related, um, like I'm always told that I need to focus better. I guess that's, uh, I, I think most people from what I've seen have like an issue of at, at first when they're starting out getting distracted by way too much, or maybe it's just something with my generation where everybody has ADHD. No, nah, that generation stuff is a bunch of lie. Like don't get, don't, don't get me wrong. Like it, there, there is differences between generations. Sure. But to assume that like your generation is is has like a lot um like these new hurdles versus like my generation no we all have the same hurdles i'm still around dude yeah. <laughs> you know the the problem isn't so much that the problem is um is the the system overall like the educational system for western societies is pretty it's overwhelming it teaches us to to succeed and if we don't we're a bunch of failures right but the reality is, is school should teach you how to take failure and learn from it, right? Versus yeah. just like, if you don't make the right choices in your life, then you, you, you're you a screw up, you know? And so one piece of advice I would say is that, yeah, of course, there's lots, lots of di distractions, but that's true with every generation, right? And of course, the distractions are easier to get into. You know, and that's always changing. But those same distractions that you're referring to are also the same things that are making me an epic JavaScript programmer right now, right? Yeah. Like the, the same tools in which you're you're describing as the problem is also the solution to your salvation. It's just how you take it on. You understand? Because if you're sitting there on Facebook and your Facebook feed is just a bunch of bogus articles that have nothing to do with what you – we're going to do and improve, that's your fault, not Facebook's fault. You understand? Because Facebook is just an algorithm that pays attention to your habits. If you're into astrophysicists, it's going to show you astrophysics. You understand? Yeah. Uh, but if you if you look at like cats like swimming in, you know, pudding or something, <laughs> you know, then you're going to get a bunch of cats swimming in pudding videos. Right, here's here's a good test. Like I'm not sure if you use YouTube or you watch YouTube. Yeah. You do? Okay. <laughs> so so go to YouTube and it should be logged onto your YouTube, right? Now under some sort of account that you own. Yeah? Uh huh. So let's check it out. Look at my YouTube and look how much different my YouTube is to yours. Like pull up, you don't have to tell me what it is, okay? But look, designing games that stand out, why technology is irresistible. I love this, the L2 Inc. guys. Coding, uh, James Comey's testimony, because that's really valuable. Right now it's live, but it's fine. I'll just watch it later. It's no matter. Um, why operation campaign is the key in MML Mobile. I'm not sure what that means, but it's something related to game design. Three pixel art techniques, right? There's other videos, like there's a bunch of four hour or 10 hour of uh, just white noise because it's my baby, <laughs> right? Mega Man X, watching old school games just being played. Yeah. Right? All good stuff, though. I mean, it's... <laughs> it's, it's because I watch it. That's my point. Because yeah. as soon as you you type in anything in here, YouTube's watching you. You understand? So if you're like, yeah, YouTube's distracting, man. No, you're distracting yourself by yeah. looking at the stuff that you're distracted by. 
don't look at that stuff anymore. Look at uh, new stuff. So that way, whenever you go to YouTube, it's going to show you the things. Like if I if I ask my wife to look at her YouTube, I already know what it would be. It would be about like breast uh, pumping and breastfeeding and baby stuff because she's like, because she's like me. She's like, if she wants information, she just goes to YouTube and watches the videos. And I bet you it's just nothing but that stuff, right? But that's important. It's relative to, it's contextually relative to what she wants and needs in her life right now. Uh, if I were to ask my teenage boy, it'll be like a bunch of Destiny how to play video videos. You know? Yeah. YouTube is not advertising anything specifically. They're trying to. They're starting to put the trending page first. Right? And I'm like, what? How dare you, YouTube? <laughs> like, I, I noticed that they just did that. I was like, what? Why are they showing me Katy Perry stuff? Like, it just threw me off. <laughs> Oh yeah, I see what you're doing. So it's I know what you're, I know what you're up to, YouTube. Don't you don't you dare. Yeah. And so uh, if you go to your Facebook, it's the same thing. Facebook and YouTube are very similar in their algorithms. All right, so watch. You'll see that it'll be mostly art related stuff. Like the very first one, cube cube brush advertisement. <clears throat> right? Painting from John Park. Uh, painting from one of my students, Danielle. More painting from O legs. You see? Yeah. Like it's not distracting stuff. And I know I know that I've gone on the far end when my Facebook or my YouTube is full of stuff that I don't really want to know too much about. I'm like, oh I've been watching too much of a thing again. <laughs> oh, god damn it, Jonah. He's always trying to find a way. He's like, Oh, this new technology. I'm gonna convert it somehow. <laughs> Yeah, it's really great. He's always figuring something out. Yeah, crazy, anyway. crazy VR, man. That's... Yeah. So, you know, so yeah, so you're essentially saying just make sure to consciously tailor your uh, distractions to be beneficial to your goals. Yeah, totally. That's a that's a much more concise way of saying what I just said. <laughs> I love. Are you gonna make more of these dinosaurs? This guy's awesome. Uh, I don't know. We'll see how people like it. Um, I, I'm going to make it animate by changing colors. Oh, no. Oh, wait. That's what I'll do. Yeah, I'm going to make a GIF of it changing colors. Because animations, dude. Anyway, I'm going to end the class now. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Good work, guys. Keep up the hard work. Appreciate y'all. And, uh, with that being said, um, let me close out my Facebook. Uh, that being said, talk with one another, hang out, explain and learn and grow together. Don't just sit around twiddling your thumbs. You have access to great tools and facets. So with that, peace out, friends, and have a great weekend. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.